Pua. Oh my god, I haven't done that intro in so long. I really wanted to make this video for a really long time. I was really scared about making this video because it seems a little bit insensitive. There's so many homeless people, there's so many people in the city that don't have a home and I don't want to sit here and complain that I can't afford it or I can't pay for certain things because some people don't even have the opportunity to do it. There's homeless people everywhere and it's really sad to see that there's such a big disparity between the really rich people who can afford these big apartments and then people literally living outside of the apartments on the street. So that's why I didn't want to make this video because I, I don't want to seem like I'm complaining. I know how much harder it is for a lot of other people for a big portion of New York City. I just want to help you guys. I also don't want to discourage you from moving to New York City. I just want to show you guys the truth. It is so hard to actually afford living here. I'm going to tell you some of the tea and some of my tips and what I did. I really want to talk about mostly how much money I saved up before moving out, how much my apartment costs and how much I spend monthly, all of the incomes that I have, some of my budgeting skills even though I'm not really that good at it. So I'm going to add some timestamps here. You can jump around if you want to. I hope this video helps. And I'm also really lucky. I want to say it's a really big privilege. My parents were supportive of me when I moved out. I paid for everything myself for the most part. But my parents, they helped me buy my meats, <laughs> halal meat. My mom brings jaw for me sometimes. You know, I wasn't starting from square one. I was able to bring decor from my house and it really gave me an extra step. With that being said, I also want to say that I am self-made for the most part. I am very, very proud of myself because I brought myself here and I buy everything myself, I pay for everything myself. I feel like a lot of people want to bring down brown women because they see someone that's successful. But I also want to say that social media makes it seem like I'm so successful. Sure, that's true in some extent. But also at the end of the day, I'm also struggling to pay rent and it's also really hard to pay rent. I got a comment that said, of course she's rich and famous enough to get promotions. That's not true, first of all. I'm gonna literally break it down for you. I barely get anything from my social media. I'm gonna break it down for you, give you all the tea. So as you guys know, I made a video on this. Please watch it if you haven't already. It gives you all the tips about um, New York and moving out. But I pay $16.50 for my apartment right now. It's a studio apartment. I have a laundry in the building. I have an elevator. My rent includes water, gas, all of that. The only thing I pay for is Wi-Fi and electricity. And I feel like that's really good. A lot of people ask me, especially my parents, they're like, why don't you just get a house? Why don't you just get an apartment complex and just get tenants so you don't have to lose money because at the end of the day I already lost over $10,000 just paying rent in the past four or five months that I've been living here and that's a lot of money I literally just see my accounts depleting and I'm like crying every single day like it's so sad but at the end of the day I really really love the opportunity that New York gives me I feel like you cannot get these opportunities anywhere else I love networking I love all of the opportunities that I get here Second of all, I don't want to own a building or own a house at this time in my life. I'm only 23. It's a lot of work. Like, my dad used to own a lot of buildings back in the day, and it's a lot of work to maintain these buildings, and it's a lot of stress, and putting down money to buy these buildings or houses, it's just a lot. I like the option of leaving this apartment whenever I want to. I'm not tied down to it. So that's why I don't have my own home or my own apartment complex you know i feel like i don't need that right now i feel like it's, it's the the lack of permanence in this apartment makes me work harder because i know that i can get something bigger hopefully in the future at the end of the day i'm paying 1650 with which i know by the way it sounds crazy if you're not from new york you're like oh my god what the hell that's a very big amount to pay especially me Living by myself, again, is a privilege. I'm so grateful for that. I feel like I'm paying for the opportunities first. And second, I am doing this as an investment for myself. I know that I'm going to get profit, positive profit back for myself by moving out. People will literally tell me that I'm crazy for paying so much. But at the end of the day, me moving out has made me grow so much. And I also want to provide for my parents. Like, me moving out of my parents' home is giving me the opportunity to grow by myself work on my business, work on my schooling, work on so many things that I couldn't have done at home. And when I was living in my parents' house, it was taking me an hour and a half to come to school. And now it only takes me 30 minutes. So I feel like in that time alone, that time that I save is giving me time to work on myself and then work on so many different things for 
my parents and for myself you know for the at the end of the day this money that i'm spending is in hopes of giving a better life for me and my family so before moving out i had to make sure that i had a lot of savings and when i say a lot i mean at least ten thousand and obviously this varies for everyone. If you don't have 10,000, don't worry, you can still move out. But I wanted to have a good amount to fall back on just in case anything happened, an emergency. I wanted to have enough money for furniture and I needed obviously the first month of rent and the last month of rent, which is security. So that was already over $3,000, almost $4,000. Since I am a freelance worker and I'm a creative, my income varies every single month. So I knew that there was gonna be some months where I did well, some months where I did horrible. So I had to have savings just in case I was making no money one month. And it's happened several times already. I want to talk very briefly on some of the incomes that I have. It's really hard to live in New York and not do multiple jobs. Unfortunately, it's really hard to just do one job and be okay with it and make enough money to really pass by. I'm a student teacher, which means I work full time and I'm full time. I'm a full time grad student. I don't make any money from student teaching, which is really unfortunate because oh my god, it takes up so much of my day, so much of my time. It's really unfortunate, I make no money from it. Whereas my teacher that I work with, she makes money obviously, she's a full-time teacher. And on top of her teaching job, she also has to do tutoring because her teaching job is just not enough. And it's crazy because that's the reality for so many freaking people in New York and it's so sad. So my main income is my business or my small business that I have with my clothing, my apparel, my art, my accessories everything that I design but again that varies every single month and it's really really sporadic I make maybe 1,000 a month and then another month I might make like 5,000 plus and it's, it's really crazy I cannot expect it to be a reliable source of money that's like the main thing that allowed me to move out and now that I have moved out I have the space to actually store some of my clothing that I sell and I just hope that this is the beginning of me actually expanding on my incomes and my business and just so many things you know another big source of my income is doing commissions and when I say commissions I do a lot of murals so that means a lot of people well not a lot I only did three that means people reach out to me to do murals in their stores so I usually do you know 20 plus feet murals that's also a big source of my income but again I don't do a lot of murals first of all and second of all murals take up a lot of my time so if I do get paid for murals it's probably like once every few months you know but on top of that I also do other commissions so shoes I do painting sometimes illustration some of my commissions come from people on Instagram people from my website or on Fiverr I actually have a profile on Fiverr which is a freelance marketplace and a lot of people reach out to me on that again it's a very small source of my income I only get a couple hundred every few months and it's just something on the side you know my fourth source of income which is crazy that people think that I get so much from this is my YouTube and TikTok so people see my TikTok and my Instagram which I have over 20,000 followers on and they're like oh my god like she's getting so much money from these brands and posting let me tell you right now i made 35 cents on tiktok recently and that's the most i've ever gotten actually i think i got 68 cents once so don't act like i'm making so much money because truthfully i am not on youtube i have not made money at all i got my first check actually recently and that's because i hit 1000 subscribers girlies let me tell you you cannot make money on youtube on tiktok on instagram unless you're big 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 famous you know so I, I I'm sorry to break it to you but it, that's not happening to me like I'm not rich and famous like please my money is very sporadic I have so many breakdowns sometimes where it feels like I'm just losing money and not gaining anything and that's literally it's been like that for the past few months and it's very discouraging to keep working when it feels like you're just losing and losing and depleting yourself and depleting your bank account but at the end of the day living in new york is for the experience and for the opportunities and in hopes of having a better life in the future to make all of these sacrifices is in hopes that you will be able to provide for yourself and your family in the future and do all of this hustling you know so that's that's my goal at least i'm hoping that it pays off at the end i have a few 
budgeting tips. I'll only mention a few. If you guys want a more in-depth video, I'll make one. Please let me know in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe. Like I said, I don't make anything for my YouTube or my Instagram. Please like and subscribe. Maybe that'll change one day. I am very frugal when it comes to spending money on food or things that I need. I'll drop everything that I have and buy things for people I love. But for me, I feel like I can't do that. The only thing that I like spending money on is experiences and food. And that's only very limited. So when I say experiences, I mean museums once in a while, galleries. I limit myself to eating out a maximum of once or twice a week. I don't like spending money on food, especially outside. Now I cook at home, I meal prep, I buy groceries every single week, and it's just so much more healthier and also just so much more cost effective. So please make your food at home. Another thing that I have to buy every single month is my Metro card. I use it every single day. I am trying to get the discounted Metro card fare, but it's so hard to get it. I just use my Apple Pay for my Metro card now because apparently after seven days of you using it, the Metro card gets capped and stops charging you. Apparently, I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly. I don't use Ubers, I don't use Lyfts. I like traveling everywhere with, with subway or bus. I feel like that has saved me a lot of money because taxis, Ubers, Lyfts, they add up to a lot of money. It can be like $30 sometimes just for one ride. So I really stop, I don't use that at all. Something else that I've had to give up now that I've moved out is traveling. I used to love traveling, I still do but I don't have the luxury of going out whenever I want now because I have to spend that money on rent and food and all of my actual necessities. And again, that is a first world problem. I know I'm complaining and making it seem like it's so bad. It's not bad. So again, I wanted to make this video because I just wanted to emphasize how hard it is living here. And I also want to kind of debunk the fact that I'm not as successful as everyone makes it seem like or as social media makes it seem like or maybe it's even my fault for making it seem like that i want to make it clear that it's also hard for me to live here especially by myself i'm trying my best out here again it's for the future it's for the long run i know i'm making all these sacrifices as you are for the long run i hope this video was helpful please let me know what else you guys want to watch i have a lot of new york city tips i have a lot of new york city stories let me know if you also want to watch a realistic take on New York City or some of the stories that have taken place in my life in New York City. I have a lot to say, but please like and subscribe. My Instagram is Labyrinth Ave. Check out my website where all my art and apparel live, labyrinthave.com, and my podcast, The Difficult Dish. And yeah, please let me know what you want to watch. I love you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.